Hello everyone! In this video, I'll show you the user interface of Cascader and briefly explain some of the basic concepts of 3D animation. For example, you'll learn what joints, mesh, and rigs are. If you'll already use some other 3D software or have experience in game development, you'll probably find most of this to be familiar. Still, some of these concepts will become very important in our future work. After launching the program, you'll be greeted by the splash window. Here you can select a color theme and a folder to store autosave files. Now we can go to the Learn Sample step. Here there are some scents that we can use to test the program. Let's pick this cube. So here is the workspace. The viewport is the main window where you can see the scent objects. In our case we see the cube. First of all, we'll need to learn how to control the viewport camera. To do this, hold down the ALT key. ALT plus left mouse button to rotate the camera. ALT plus mouse wheel to pan the camera. To zoom in and out, hold the right mouse button or rotate the mouse wheel. This control scheme is similar to the ones found in many 3D programs, such as Maya. At the top right corner of the viewport, you can see the view cube. When I rotate the camera, this cube rotates as well. This way it shows the angle from which I see the scene. If you click one of the colored cones, the camera will snap to the corresponding axis. Of course, it might be not very obvious with the cube, so let's take a human. By the way, all open scenes are displayed as tabs above the viewport. You can have several scenes open at once, and you can easily switch between them. Let's go back to the view cube. For example, the y-axis is colored green, here we see the scene from above. The z-axis is colored blue, we see the scene from the front. The x-axis is red, it is a side view. Some modelers produce characters that rotate around the x-axis. In cases like this, Z would be the side view. Also, other 3D software can have coordinate axes oriented differently. For example, the Z axis can point upward. And if you have a model made in such a program, it can appear to be lying on the ground when you import it to Cascader. For these cases, there is a dedicated checkbox in the settings. All this, however, doesn't concern us for the moment. It is just a bit of extra info. In this course, we'll only be working with sample models. There is also an isometric view mode. To enable it, click the view cube itself. In the isometric mode, there is no perspective, the image is flat and looks somewhat like a blueprint. For example, in the perspective mode, the objects closer to our point of view appear to be bigger, while those at the distance look smaller. Here the character's left hand is closer to the camera, and the right one looks a lot smaller in comparison to it. Now I enable the isometric mode. The human brain is so used to experience the world with perspective, it could seem that the right hand has become bigger than the left. In reality, though, they simply have the same size. The isometric mode is most useful when the camera is snapped to an axis. In this case, you should see a grid behind the character in the viewport. You can also press the spacebar and open two viewports at once. This way you can observe the model from different angles at the same time. But enough about viewport for now. At the right side of the screen there are the outliner, the send settings and the event log tabs. In the event log you can see messages on both errors and successful actions. In our case, it said that the send with the cube has been loaded successfully. In the send settings, you can set parameters for various instruments. The outliner lists all objects that are present in the send. As you can see, it is a rather long list of objects, even though we only have a single cube. This is because the characters intended for animation often consist of entire sets of various objects. Cascadeur includes several modes for viewing the scene. In each of these modes, you can see and select only the objects of certain types. 
Also, each of these modes can be customized by clicking it with the right mouse button. So, what objects make up this cube? The first one is the mesh. A mesh is the surface of an object. The second is a skeleton, a set of joints. This cube only has few joints. More often fall, characters include entire joint chains. Each joint controls the movement and the deformation of the specific parts of the mesh. Of course, for this to happen, the mesh should be linked to the joints in a certain way. This link is known as a skinning. This means you won't be able to control the parts of the character's mesh that don't have corresponding joints. For example, I cannot move the ears of this character. But controlling characters using joints is not very convenient and generally not recommended as it is easy to break the characters this way. To control the joints in a proper way, special controllers are used. The set of such controllers is known as a rig. Each 3D software has its own controlling system, which can look differently and work different ways. The same character, consisting of a mesh and a set of joints, can be opened in various 3D programs, but the rig controllers cannot be transferred between programs. In Cascader, the main rig controllers look like points connected by lines. Character rigs also include special rigid bodies. It is these bodies that determine physical behavior for the character. One of the main features of the Rick and Cascader is that the points can influence each other. For example, if you drag the character's arm or leg, the entire body would move as if it was a real physical chain. Now let's go back to our cube. It has a point controller for each of the verticals. These points can be moved with a dedicated tool, the manipulator. The manipulator for translating objects can be selected on the toolbar above the viewport. This manipulator looks like three arrows pointed in the direction of the coordinate axis. The green arrow is the y-axis, the red arrow is the x-axis, the blue arrow is the z-axis. The axis that is currently selected is colored yellow. Select one of the points and drag it holding the left mouse button. The cube would act like a real object grabbed and dragged by one of its parts. However, working this way with separate points is not always convenient. To move the cube as a whole, you'll need to select all of its points. This is a very important principle when you work in Cascader. Try to select every point that you'd like to move. This can be done, for example, by using the selection box. Hold the left mouse button and move the mouse and the box will appear. You can also select every point of the cube by double-clicking one of them. Or you can select several points one by one by clicking them while holding the Shift key. In our case, of course, the most convenient way would be to use the selection box or the double-click. It is especially important to select several points at once when you'd like to rotate them. The rotate manipulator can be found on the same tab. The pivot is a point around which the object rotates. Pivot can be set to any point by clicking this point with the right mouse button. And if you click the empty space, the pivot will return to where it initially was. If you select only one point and try to rotate it, nothing will happen. That's because you're trying to rotate a single point. To rotate the whole cube, you'll need to select all of its points. But the cube also has a special blue point in its center. This is the center of mass. We'll be taking a closer look at it in another video. But for now, I can tell that the center of mass can be used in cases when you need to move the object as a whole. By selecting the center of mass, you can move every point of the cube at the same time and even rotate them. This is possible because every point is connected to this center of mass. A manipulator has two working modes, the global and the local. In the global or world mode, the axis of the manipulator coincide with the coordinate axis of the whole sand, the ones visible on the view cube. This is useful when you need to place an object in the sand, but this is not always useful when working with the object itself. This is why there is also the local or object mode. Now the manipulator's axis coincide with the object's axis and they rotate along with the object. 
In the following videos, we'll learn more about using controllers and manipulators to set up characters' poses. But for now, this is enough. We should also say a few words about saves. A scene can be saved using the file menu. If you are using a scene from the samples, you should probably choose the Save As option for saving it for the first time, and set a folder and a name for the scene. If you simply click Save, the scene will be saved under the same name in the same folder. This way, you may end up overwriting a sample scene. I'd also recommend making a new save for every key point of your work. The program also makes autosaves. So, in case something suddenly goes awry with your system, you won't lose your animation. You can set the interval in minutes and the number of these saves. That's all for now. Try rotating the camera and the objects for yourself. Use hotkeys, they can make your workflow a lot faster and convenient. W for the translate manipulator, E is for the rotate manipulator. To switch between global and local mode, use the tilde hotkey.